He knew his wife in the, in the Old Testament. We do not know. Adam lay with his wife. How did he lay? Was the wife on top? Was he under? We don't know. Was, was the laying, was it behind? Was she? We don't know how the laying occurred. We just knew that there was a laying. What the Bible says, it said, your body does not belong to you. Give yourself to your husband. The Bible did not say give your vagina to your husband or give his, you know. If you, where in the Bible did God say that this is the style? Where? Who invented missionary? Do we ask ourselves those questions if we really really want to follow it? It means that all those people that do with the method in your marriage, you are going to a fire. Yes. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Victoria Ayodele Fash. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for joining me. For a subscriber, you know I love you. You know I appreciate you so much. Thank you guys for always and always coming back. All right, so today I have something very interesting to talk about, okay? Because it's about the last video I did with my husband, right? So in the last video I did with my husband, we were discussing some, um, we're answering some of the questions that you guys asked us. And one person asked about phone sex or sex in long distance marriage. Okay, how how to go about it or and all of that. So what do we think about it? And I remember me and my husband, we gave our own thoughts. <laughs> about it which i think a lot of people probably no a few people not a lot a few people actually misunderstood and we had some comments you know like hey you are encouraging people to masturbate um to touch themselves i'm going to say that instead of the word i'm um, just because of youtube guidelines um and others were like no it is absolutely wrong and this and this and that and i was to be honest i was not upset by the comment i think because you know there was a time that you know i also used to think that way i remember there was a time i had this conversation with a friend of mine and obviously you know when you're brought up in the african culture you are thought thought you are taught <laughs> When you're brought up in the African culture, you're taught that, you know, a lot of things, uh, especially when it has to do with doing the do, you know, they teach you the things not to do, but nobody actually teaches you the things to do. And that's why I dedicate a lot of the content on this channel to talk about what you should do to make sure that you and your husband are having, you know, an amazing time sexually or in your marriage bed, right? And yeah, anyway, so many of us have been told don't do this don't do this don't do this right but nobody's telling us these are the things that you should do right so many of us have this ideology that when it comes to intimacy between husband and wife and it comes to you know doing the do between couples it has to be the do okay so many people define you know intimacy or doing the do or sex rather as you know the penetrative aspect if it, that doesn't happen then you guys have not done the do and i think that i have done a lot of content on this channel to like debunk that mindset right um that you know you can do a lot of things without you know going through penetrative you know doing the penetration itself and it would count as you know doing the do but <laughs> so that's why i was a bit surprised when you know, I found you know, a lot of people actually were curious. They wanted to know, is it okay as Christians? Is it a sin for you to, you know, touch yourself in your marriage? And ah, this is one controversial topic, especially from the African past perspective. You know, it's not something that you just come to talk about, right? Especially because we think or we have an idea that every time we have been taught about sex, even in class in school in biology they always talk about the female organ the main organ and the two of them have to enter for intercourse to happen but that is not always the case and i think we've discussed this over and over again and if you go to the bible so since we're talking about christianity and i think that there's one place that um many of christians you get this idea that you know god is against couples touching themselves in marriage i think there's one place where we get it from and that's from the book of um i, I know it's the story of honor so especially if you belong to like the um some denomination of christianity a lot of people always see touching yourself in marriage as a sin a lot of doctrines now let us be clear on what it is you know a lot of doctrines you know i know um, i've heard that you know in the catholic aspects they condemn it hugely like you're not allowed to do it in marriage remember everything i'm talking about is in marriage because it is not until and, and i think that that's one of the failure 
of you know when we are educating people about you know sex even in christianity right you see you know people always talk about the penetrative aspects but we don't talk about every other thing that is that involves the action we don't talk about the kissing the touching the you know um, caressing and all of that we don't talk about those things because to be honest a lot of people who call themselves virgin myself inclusive you know before i eventually was not <laughs> you know we always we we have done a lot of things right the only thing that we did not do okay <laughs> is the action in itself right and then we we think we call ourselves you know there's this self-righteousness because i was able to withhold myself and we did not go through the penetrative you know aspect of it then and and i'm not saying you're not a virgin i mean i still considered myself a virgin right but but the truth is there's a lot that goes into doing the do right and that's why if you go to the bible when jesus christ himself talks about you know the sin the sexual sin he talks about looking at another woman lustfully he talks about you know having lustful thoughts in your heart and all of that the moment you have that lust you have already committed sexual sin you understand so it even comes from lust you have not even gone to kiss you have not even gone to do the you know everything that comes with the action right so you you were single or you're single but you're not you're not doing the action but they are using their fingers on you they are not doing the action but you are kissing the guys you know sucking your boobs and doing stuff like that but you are not doing the main action and you're technically a virgin but, you, but we both know <laughs> And like I said, this is not to condemn anyone because, and this is not to encourage it either, because if we're calling a spade, let's call it a spade. Some of us made that mistakes and all of that. So anyways, what I'm trying to say here is if we now go to the Bible where people usually reference as, you know, God condemning, you know, um, touching yourself in marriage is the story of Onan in the Bible. Um, Onan was the second son of Judah in the Bible and um, I think he got married to a Canaanite in the Bible and um, and he did not want her. It was intentionally spilling its seed. So basically he would have sex with her and then when it was time for him to come, what we call withdraw because if we're really going through that by through the word of God, if we really really want to follow it, it means that all those people that do withdraw a method in your marriage, you are going to a fire. Yes. <laughs> to follow it because that was what he did right so they had they had the they do the do but when it was time for him to release so that the lady would get pregnant he would remove his seed and spill it and god cursed him because of that did god curse him or did he even die i think god yeah it, it's tama tama was his wife name yes god actually killed him because he was intentionally it, 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 it was not because he was spilling it. I'm sure he's not the first person in the Bible to spill his seed. I'm sure he's not. But it was the action. Remember that God does not just look at our action, right? If God only looks at our actions, a lot of people like Jacob, like David, will never make heaven, right? God always looks at the intention, the heart, right? God saw that his heart was not in the right place. It wasn't because, you know, maybe they the case a lot of people do even if you don't spill your seed the fact that you're even doing family planning should be a sin and i know a lot of denomination in christendom considered family planning a sin which anyways um so that was the fact the fact that his intention for doing that was wrong there's a reason why a lot of things the bible is quiet about a lot of things when it regards sex right the pure thing that the bible talks about is it has to be in the confines of marriage whatever you do between the two of you it is your business one thing we also need to go back to is what exactly is intimacy what is doing the do when it comes to marriage i've said this over and again on this channel that the idea the reason the main purpose of god when it comes to intimacy is for the two of you to get to know each other right it does not have to be it is not the organ entering the organ that is the knowing it means that then anybody that was raped was having intimacy that is not intimacy intimacy is i am getting to know you are getting to know yourself intimately we are naked and we are not ashamed right i'm exploring your body you're exploring mine we are doing things to ourselves that makes us to get to that point that naturally i cannot get to until we are together right there's a way that ecstasy makes you there's a realm you get to when you are there like it's it's like you are naked from inside out <laughs> 
know how to explain that. You see, it is that vulnerability. That vulnerability. That is why, you know, you see stuff like you were naked and unashamed in the Bible. That is God's idea about intimacy. And the other reason, or maybe the primary reason before even knowing each other, is to procreate, right? What I'm trying to say here is, when it comes to getting to know each other, or getting to that place of intimacy in marriage, it is exploring yourselves. It is touching. Why? If if the only if the only reason if the only if God's only idea for doing the do was penetrative, then that place should be the only place that takes you. Yes. Then why why is it that you know when you kiss me in my neck, my body shock? Why is that when you you know touch other part of my body or my boobs or my hand or my legs and stuff like that? Why does why do they send sensory messages to my head? Why why should you know touching a man's neck or his his temple or stuff like that? Why should they send a message to the brain if that is the only if that, then that's the only place where the enjoyment should be? Yes, that is where the uh, the eventual enjoyment, the orgasm, that is where it happens, that is where it manifests and all of that, but that is not just it. It happens every other place in your body. <laughs> Anyways, I know I've, I've spoken out of point, but what I want to address here is, you know, this issue of, oh, if you're touching yourself in marriage, you're sinning. That's not true. And I know that many of this has been because of doctrines that we've been raised with and a lot of ideologies we, we grew up with. Just that thought, a lot, they tell you so much that is wrong with, you know, doing the do in marriage. Sorry, doing the do generally. That you get into marriage. I was short, you know, I've been having conversations with women um, for my classwork and you can always tell one thing that has been constant that everyone keeps talking about in short I'll be bringing some of them on this channel just so we talk about the ideology because one question I ask them what was your thinking what was your mindset about sex before you got married and there's always that is either they talk about shame or talk about guilt or talk about you know something that is not right and all of that when you have that mindset about it you get into marriage thinking and there's some people that if you are not doing missionary you are sinning there are some people that if you were in the bible did god say that this is the style where who invented missionary do we ask ourselves those questions even the i don't want to go there because if i go there then people will start to bring in now into somebody actually asked me on that can you pay in now see there's a proper order for things right uh, <laughs> and then when we talk about it then we'll be like if you are condemning in now then why is uh, or why is it acceptable so there's a lot of debate and i am not um i don't um, i don't see myself as an expert in the field i just share from what i've studied and from the understanding that i have come to right based on my own study personal time and my own experiences right so i when it comes to going through the wrong site I, I do not think because there's a reason why God made that place an exit and not an entrance now if you're talking about mouth mouth has a lot of uh, uses okay <laughs> you use your mouth to talk you use it to chop you use the mouth to you know to kiss you use it to the mouth is a sexual organ because the fact that you kiss a lot is a sexual act act so if you want to go to so how is the how is that place how is it a sexual See, anyways let us move on so <laughs> What I'm trying to say is there are a lot of ways that you and your husband can reach, you know, orgasm without even doing penetration, right? So does that mean that intercourse did not occur? That's a lie, right? And that's one of the reasons why a lot of women are struggling, especially women who are unable to, because you do realize that, and I've said it on this video, that it's research. This is not me talking. Go and go online and research. You realize that a lot of women cannot get to orgasm through penetration you have to do devise other strategies and other ways for her to be able to get there right so if we have this mindset that this is how we're supposed to be then you get into marriage and you start to face problem right so you say you cannot do this you can't do that it has to be this way the light has to be off who gave all those rules we in the bible solomon was the most sexual life person how many wives did he have 700 and 300 concubines ha. You will know. See, he's the uh, I like the way uh, Pastor Kingsley used, Kingsley used to refer to. Him. He said he's Professor Emeritus. He said he's the professor when it comes to you know uh, intimacy. He's the professor. And if you see the way he talks about his partner's body, how did he know? How did he, how he talks about kissing the ears and the boobs and the kiniko and the kiniko and you know. If, if Solomon, who was the most sexualized person in the entire world, I don't think anybody has gone through as many women that Solomon went through in his entire life. If he, if he talks about it in that way and it is in your Bible, what makes you think 
why didn't you say off the lights eh, open your open your leg let me eh. guys please eh if you and this is one of the reasons why you have a lot of sexually frustrated people in marriages so let me just make this clear when it comes to marriage every when it be outside of marriage anything sexual is forbidden because god created a container because god knows that it can easily get out of hand when you start to do the touching when you start to do the rubbing i start to do the kissing and all of that before you know what is happening it doesn't that yeah okay and you know it takes a lot of help and self-control for you to get to that point where for you to you know take yourself to that level and then try to come out of it without going all the way you understand that and i've heard a lot of people who you, you know they never planned it and it just happened you know they always say that it just happened and people always make fun like what you were in there or were you blind or stuff like that no sometimes it really just happens because they didn't plan to go down but you went through every other area every other, before you know what is happening your mind have gone and it happened okay anyway so um when it's outside marriage everything that had that would take you to that realm of intimacy that god plans for marriage because remember i've already said that when it comes to god sex is marriage in god's sight all the ceremony that we did is just the way of formalizing things in the bible when it talks to marriage it says the husband will go to the wife's house pay the diary carry your wife that's it okay when when it comes to the eyes of god intimacy that's why you go to the bible before marriage ever came before wedding rather ever came when God talks about marriage or refers to marriage, it's always Adam knew his wife, this person knew his wife. That is the knowing. That knowing is the intimacy. It's the bonding when it comes to God. Anyway, so, what was I saying? Hey, so that when you do all those things that will create that bonding between you and another person outside of marriage, that is a sin. Even though if you did not go and do the doing itself, the fact that you, you know, allowed yourself to get to that place with somebody that you are not bound together with till forever that is the sin right however when it comes to inside of your marriage the bible says that marriage is honorable right and the bed undefiled okay that bed whatever you want to do whether it's that bed whether it's anywhere as long as the two of you and i've talked about the bed that the bed is not just the physical bed so it means that people that do not have bed when they got married it means that <laughs> anyway so whatever you do in the confines of your marriage is between you and your partner as long as there's consent as long as it's it's the two of you are enjoying it as long as it's bringing out the vulnerability between you guys it's permissible right so it is not until the organs interact before intimacy has happened right it does the fact from the kissing intimacy has started okay so the rubbing and everything that's in itself is sex okay so outside of marriage it is masturbation because you are doing it by yourself you are getting self gratification it is not fulfilling god's purpose of closeness and intimacy with your partner with your husband right it is but in the context of marriage and as long as it's between the two of you because remember it has to be the two of you so even if you're married right and you are doing it alone it's not right that is not god's idea or god's plan for intimacy in marriage because you have to be together so if for any reason you and your husband have so outside of marriage like i said it is masturbation in marriage it is sex okay outside of marriage it is it's outside of marriage is sex in marriage it is sex touching yourself is sex in us outside marriage it is sex inside of marriage right according to the bible this is not my ideology this is according to the word of god okay well let me trace back because the bible did not talk about masturbation in the bible apart from the story of honor right i'm just saying that when it comes to intimacy everything that goes into intimacy sex is not god did not give us a definition of what sex is in the bible go to your bible the only place jesus christ talks about sex is you know he knew his wife they know what did they do we don't know he knew his wife in the, in the old testament we did not know adam lay with his wife how did he lay was the wife on top was he under we don't know was was the lane was it behind was she we don't know how the lane occurred we just knew that there was a lane what led to the lane we have absolutely no idea and god intentionally did not tell us or give us a specific way how you should do intimacy in your marriage as long as a lay happened there was a lay you understand that anyway so so that's what i'm saying that according to the bible sex is sex anything that brings out that arousal that brings out that intimacy that vulnerability between you and a person it might not you and it does not have to be the organs interacting as long as you go through that process you are doing the do okay so 
outside of marriage is still doing the do and it's still a sin inside of marriage it is doing the do and it is not a sin so if for any reason you and your partner you are apart and you are able to devise strategies to do it why is it a sin is you and your partner you're doing it together you enjoy yourself together so why 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 would you feel like you're sinning again going back to culture some of us we have mixed culture and religion that we cannot tell the difference most times it is what our culture have told us what our you know values that we've been raised with and most of the things that our parents have told us not to do and convinced us that is a sin that is causing this confusion especially in the christian body and then we make it say it is god and then your partner is not satisfied or you are not satisfied because remember what the bible says said your body does not belong to you give yourself to your husband the bible did not say give your vagina to your husband or give his you know <laughs> penal structure to you no he said give yourself he said your body everything belongs to your partner everything your partner has belongs to you all his body all my body belongs to him right so god did not give a specification okay only this section of your body mm -mm. he said your body does not belong to you his body does not belong to him give your body to each other every part of your body my sister every part of your body my brother so please don't don't end up having a say sometimes you should ask your partner am i satisfy you are you sexually satisfied you'll be amazed you know just open and put the open ground say your mind what do you think you'll be amazed how many of your partners are frustrated because of your mindset that this is the legalistic way god that created it and god that left it out of you know left the structure and the way it should happen out of the bible god didn't know what he was doing god that allowed your organs to arouse when you see certain things in a woman he didn't know what he was doing so he will not say it's only that please ah, my sister my brother they've lied to you sometimes you need to check yourself where is this mindset coming from right so when i saw that comment i wasn't really pissed because i've been in that situation before i've actually you know suggested that god did not plan for couples to but until i got you know married and i realized that okay yeah you need to explore yourself sometimes in short when you guys are in doing the intimacy together you get to realize certain places in your body that you didn't know could do certain things it is in exploring each other's bodies that you get to do that right but if you are uh, confined that this is how we used to be you will never discover the places and god wants you to enjoy sex in marriage wants you to enjoy it right so if you are not enjoying it you are not doing it right because god gave you everything that you need to enjoy it so if for any reason you are not enjoying it so from one of your two of you if only one person that is enjoying it in marriage you are not doing your work because the bible says that give yourself to your partner make sure she's satisfied and her job is to make sure you are satisfied so it is a sin well not maybe not a sin don't let me say that because i'm not god but it is wrong and you're not doing what god says in the bible when only one person is so you, you comfortably do it you are finished you are okay you now go to sleep knowing that your wife is not satisfied my brother my sister or your husband is not satisfied or wrong okay it's wrong okay so whatever you need to do god gave you everything whatever you need to do to help each other be good to help each other enjoy intimacy do it okay in marriage if you do any of them outside of marriage my sister you're sinning whether the organ entered or it didn't enter you have sinned okay ask god for forgiveness <laughs> anyway so yeah let me know what you guys think about i know it's a very controversial and i know no matter what i say some people will never still get it and i don't expect you to take my word for it i expect you to study the word i expect you to go to the bible and try to figure out is this mindset i have is it from the word or is it from the world or what i've been taught growing up is that what is affecting my mindset is it the doctrines that i've been taught growing up that is affecting it or is it actually in the bible and if it's in the bible where is it because if you cannot find it in the world in the word of god then you're probably not having the right mindset yeah yeah anyway so that's where we're going to end this video so let me know what you guys think about the video until we meet again i still remain victoria fash and i'll see you guys on the next one okay remember to like if you haven't liked this video you are wrong okay so before you start watching this video like it i'm waiting like the video mm. if you have not subscribed subscribe i'm waiting on you okay anyways thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next one all right until then i still remain victoria fash have an amazing week okay bye mm -hmm.